All right, so I just uh, finished recording and skipping through this video, uh, but it's gonna be the first take and I completely deleted it because I'm just not happy with how it turned out. Um, I don't know, the lighting wasn't good and everything and just not happy with just going through the list and going through the motions. It, you're never gonna see whatever I recorded just now and we're gonna do it all over again or at least I'm gonna do it all over again and you'll for you it will be the first time you're gonna watch this and I'll talk about everything. Um, it's very interesting that when you're creating stuff, uh, games, videos, music, I guess, you're doing it because you love doing it, you love creating, but you also hope to gain an audience that actually likes what you're making. Um, the problem is that as soon as you gain an audience, there's one thing that increases massively and that's the fear of losing that audience. So for me, these videos, when I started doing these vlogs, it was just to show you guys how I create my games and talk a little bit about it and show you who the person behind these games, me. With every uh, video I put out, the fear of losing all those new viewers increases. I try to create something that the audience probably likes because that's why the audience came. And the same thing goes for games because at some point you have a lot of people that like your games and trying something completely different that's a very big risk or a high fear that everybody who liked game a might not stick around or might not like game b or maybe even feel terrible that game b isn't like game a and the fear of losing an audience is uh, sometimes the biggest problem and I decided for at least the videos to let that go and just create videos I like and, and keep making videos I like and they might not be for game developers like other YouTubers are doing. Um, not very technical but more um, everything around the technical stuff, everything around in the game business and behind the scenes. That's why these videos are called behind the scenes. You get to see what goes on behind the scenes and not just the code but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes of game development. And that's what these videos are about. And on top of that, I love doing weird videos. So sometimes there will be special effects, smoke effects, maybe some snow effects that might not have anything to do with the video or the game. Spoiler alert, in this case, the snow actually has something to do with the game after the intro. But that's the kind of videos I like to make and I have to let go of that fear of losing you. If you don't like my videos, that's okay. Um, somebody else will. and. The main thing for me is that I like creating these videos. Like last week was a very different video. I really enjoyed making it. The video I just recorded, to get back to the point, I wasn't liking it. It was just me sitting at the desk and talking and not interested and maybe I wasn't feeling it. So that's why I'm doing this intro now so that we can get going to the real video and talk about residual because I have a bunch of stuff to talk about residual just in a more enthusiastic way than I did in the video I just did that you're never gonna see. Does that still make sense? That, uh, after the intro, we're gonna talk about residual. Delete it all. Delete it all. All right, um, let's get this video going because it can't be more chaotic than it already has been for me today. Um, residual. I've been doing a bunch of stuff. Um, I haven't talked about it for a few weeks since the Steam demo, I guess. Or did I do one? I, I don't know. I haven't talked about it for a few weeks. At least I didn't talk about it last week and I've been doing a lot of work on the game. To, just to prove that this, this list right here, that's, that's all the stuff I've been doing. A lot of uh, tiny things, but also a bunch of uh, cooler and bigger things. To start with, Snow. I've added snow effects and rain effects to the overworld for residual. Uh, this was originally my plan, but um, I didn't add it because early on in game development, I figured that most of the time the player was in the game, it would be uh, underground and not in the overworld. So what's the point of adding cool effects in the overworld if nobody's gonna see it? So I didn't add snow and rain effects, but now the spaceship is your main uh, focal point, your main uh, safe spot. It's the only place you can sleep and restore your health. It's the, uh, safe, the safest place on this planet. Um, 
you can create devices and gadgets there. So you're gonna be going back and forth using your teleportation and going back and forth to that spaceship. So you're gonna be in the overworld much more than you were uh, a few weeks ago. So that's a good enough reason for me to add snow and rain effect. Also, they are extremely easy to create and they just look cool, so. But that's the side, that's of course, it's mostly functional. Moving on, because this is, I added sandworms. It's on my list right here, sandworms. Um, I just needed a day to create something new and, and a little feature. And I have been adding sandworms to um, Ashworld, Gunslugs, Heroes of Loot, Space Grunts has one worm and uh, there are worms and snakes. I have been adding worm creatures like this to uh, many of my games. And since this game is also uh, gonna tie a bunch of these games together and explain some things happening in all these games, I needed that sandworm. So um, there's now a sandworm, but only on very warm planets because everybody knows sandworms like this only live in hot areas. We all know that, right? You, you in the back, everybody, yeah. Everybody knows it. But I hear you say, um, wasn't residual the game without guns? You're right. So how am I gonna deal with a sandworm? I haven't figured that out completely. Just, no, not completely. But um, I did manage to add the option of uh, throwing stuff. So if you have a tiny rock, you can throw it at a sandworm. Not sure it's gonna do much. And I'm not sure if that counts as a weapon. I don't think it counts as a weapon, more uh, exercise. So you can throw stuff right now. Uh, it's various things, uh, rocks and um, other type of rocks and uh, bombs. You can throw bombs, which are made out of cacti. And I'm not sure if that counts as a weapon, but it's used to, oh boy. Uh, there's no weapons in residual, but there are things you could potentially use to defend yourself, but no weapons. <laughs> Moving on again, because this video is, ooh. all right. I have put a lot of time in mining. Um, actually, most of the last two weeks has been put in the whole mining and not just uh, the functionality in the game, but also the code behind it, which is uh, hard to explain or hard to talk about, but it took a lot of stuff uh, to make sure that mining is very flexible now and I can pretty much add new resources and have them uh, mineable in the game without having to spend hours of work on it. So that's pretty much why I put a lot of time in the whole mining process. I also made it so that mining is now done um, near hotspots. The world generator, the level generator creates hotspots around the map and those hotspots um, contain resources that you can mine. So you can't just mine everywhere and you can't just mine unlimited amounts because uh, when you find a hotspot, you put your mining device there, it starts mining and once all the items in that hotspot are mined, gained, collected, the hotspot is gone and you'll have to uh, move your mining device anywhere else in the world, which means also deep underground you'll be able to find uh, new hotspots for mining and things like that and for various resources it's a very interesting system and you can now go uh, back to your ship and you can uh, create a mining device place it somewhere remember where you placed it then teleport in between those things and it's an interesting concept and it kind of works because you'll now have feel more in control of the stuff you're uh, carrying and collecting and crafting and all those kind of things So a lot of the work that went into mining also meant I could um, completely rewrite parts of the level generator because it had a bunch of checks that a certain door requiring a switch which would require a, a power source that needed a power source to be generated in the level. But now we don't need that power source, we can just create a huge amount of these type of doors requiring power or requiring metal or any type of resource. The player will just have to make sure it mines enough of it and that 
saved me a lot of checks and tests in level generator. So I, a lot of that code has been deleted and removed and isn't needed anymore because mining is now a, uh, I can say key part to surviving on the planet. So my list of features and new stuff is, is much longer, but many of these things are just uh, tiny things and fixes and improvements. And um, if you're a patron, you should be able to play all these things now in the new build. It's available on Patreon, so uh, check there if you wanna play the Gurdon game. Um, I've also been spending time on Kickstarter. I mentioned this a few weeks ago here and there and I wasn't sure if I was gonna do the whole Kickstarter process but I'm pretty sure now that I will be doing a Kickstarter. In fact I already have the whole Kickstarter page uh, up. It's just not live yet. It's already through the Kickstarter process of being approved so I just have to push a button and it goes live. Before I do that I want to make certain uh, everything is there and I'm I want to write down a little battle plan so that I can keep people updated and posted. There will be a demo available and that will be public. So uh, everything I just talked about will also be available in the demo. It's probably gonna be through Steam because that's just the easiest way. And it also allows me to get people to the Steam page for this game and hopefully wishlist it. And um, we'll see how this all ends up. I'll keep you all updated on the whole process. And um, I'm not sure when the Kickstarter will be live. It might actually be live already as this video goes up because I'm recording this on Friday and it will be live next Thursday. And maybe I'll just put the Kickstarter live before that. I don't know, but I will be updating you on, uh, on the whole process because it's a new thing for me. Never done a Kickstarter. Uh, asking people for money upfront is just a weird thing and a huge thing that you have to get your head around and just do it. Um, so I, I am gonna do it. I am gonna hope that people will fund it. It's not a lot of money required, just enough money to um, pretty much fund my next two or three months working on this game, which uh, brings us near October, November. Either way, it's gonna be an interesting story for the videos. So um, the Kickstarter, here we go. First Kickstarter. Let's see how this pans out. And um, that's it for this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And I'll see you next week. Bye. All right, let's get, let's, let's get this video going because it can't, can't go more chaotic.